in a game with Bazooka Joe, Joe Milton with one of the strongest arms we've seen in college football, Brent. We walked away talking about Carson Beck and his arm strength, and moreover, Carson Beck in the Heisman race, which I think is something that even a month through the season, I know I, I look, I've been very public about, didn't think any of this was possible. He's proven so many people wrong. And uh, we're going through to show some of Carson Beck's greatest plays. There's a ton of them here against Tennessee. Yeah. And the numbers to me, you know, obviously I, I get caught up in being a numbers guy, but the numbers to me don't really speak to how well he's playing. Cause I, as I wrote after the game, he's playing the position with the mental game, the footwork, all the stuff that everybody coaches to the nth degree, he's playing the position better than any quarterback in the country. Like, and just it's so much of what he's doing that is is just fun to watch. And just this the title I think is is just. Let's start here. First play that we're going to look at. This is not a first down. This is a third and long situation. But Georgia's already down here, seven nothing after the seventy five yard touchdown run. So need some points. Need some momentum. Georgia gets down here third and long in Tennessee territory, but you set up a field goal here, which is what Georgia does successfully. Well, and it's it's one where a couple of different things. Third down, he was really good on third down. <laughs> I got some some he was eight of nine for 112 yards on third down. He had, so he, and, he, and one of those was a drop, uh, the delt drop, I think, at the beginning of the second half. So he was technically nine of nine on third down. If you look at his uh, adjusted completion percentage. Tennessee gave this mug look where, you know, they're kind of standing up, everybody's standing up. We talked about this in the preview. Uh, and, but again, you wanted to answer. And I, I'm glad you highlighted that because uh, Mr. Rattledge, uh went, what's, what's the phrase in, in Mortal Kombat? Finish him uh, on, on, on Pierce and Nicholas versus like, and yes, I baptize you in the name of <laughs> my God. Pass pro is not passive. That's in between Marius Mims and Tate Ratledge. And oh, what a bad day you have here, sir. Don't leave your feet. Oh, don't leave the feet. That's the main still, reason I wanted to show this play. It really yes, is. it is. And, and plus, like, he was, it's just, he's really good in third down. And you get that answer drive because, you know, that was right after the, uh, or I think the, the fumble. Like, you only had the only thing that really stopped Georgia in this game was itself like the fumbled interchange uh, snap kind of thing when he's pulling, pulling the ball away, all that sort of stuff. Stall for a minute go. while I make sure I get this zoom back out. I was, so okay. <laughs> but you know, it's just, when you talk about third down, like it, it's, it's the money down. It's all the pressures on the QB to make the right read, accurate throw, all this stuff. And now we got you in the, the big screen. Oh, yeah. yeah, dude, I'm, I'm moving all around here. Here we go. Back where we need to be. Back it was worth it. It was worth it to show that off. Well, and, you know, you, you can't not I, – I remember seeing this live when it happened because when they showed the replay like this, it's just like pass pro is not passive. You see this too many times. You texted me and said, we got to make sure this plays in here. Tell me why. Just because, again, third down – and we've highlighted this consistently throughout the year because this is what he has to do and needs to do. I mean, they bring pressure. Great job of Edwards getting a blitz and just finding the crease and getting a first down. And the ability to move the chains when your guys are covered, it just it adds an element to the offense, especially with how good Georgia is in pass pro, especially with men's back. Now, trust in green, especially from a grade perspective, and we'll show one play later, but they struggle overall. But they're usually good enough uh, to create and at least push guys past the quarterback so you get uh, these lanes to run in. When it's there, he has to take it, and he does a great job of it here, fighting through a little contact. He's done it. He did it against Missouri. He's, he's, just, he's done it consistently, and it's just – Keeps moving the chains, keeps moving along, keeps keeps the offense sort of rolling in preferable down distance. You see that gravitational pull that Brock Bowers has here? Yeah. Two guys. Now now you're going with me because I command that kind of attention. Anytime yeah. Beck sees that, like, yeah, he's not Stetson Bennett scrambling. No, he's not a, a super fast runner. If that's there, he can take it. I mean, he's, yes. he's, he's good enough for that. All day, every day. And Ladd played limited snaps. 
He was limited, but he still cooked DBs in the few limited snaps <laughs> that he had. This will probably be remembered, and I think you even wrote this as the Dylan Bell game. But man, yes. what a game for Marcus Rosemary Jackson as well. First uh, two touchdown game of his career. I think he had two touchdowns pre in the season prior to this. He had two touchdowns all of last year. Big time game for him. And he's just he's money man on third down. I think the guy that trains him follows us and, film, and watches film don't lie. So shout out to them. I forget what it was. Go get it training or something like that. But hit me up on Twitter. By the way, Kendall Milton, great job in pass pro in this game, uh, picking up the blitz and Beck. Like what's amazing here is look at the look at his eyes. And look how sort of close that is. To like, normally, that's a there's a little bit of uh, what's you know, happy feet maybe is is the term with what's going on right there beside him. Go look at the first month of the season. This is a check down or a sack all day long. This and is so much more. Of a chai, yes, this is so much more of a composed and confident Carson Beck. And, and when you know you got great pass pro, but also just confidence, I think, in his self, in his own sort of ability to hand and do things. Go back to that, though. So one quick thing on that, or yeah, here we go. Blitz, against the blitz. And this is, he's killed teams with it all year in this game. 11 of 11, 151 yards and a touchdown, 93.2 passing grade against the blitz. Phen again, phenomenal job by Milton picking up in pass pro. And, and again, look at the gravitational pull of Mr. Bowers here. These other skill guys are going to be open if 19's on the field. And the other thing with this is go back to the snap, like pre-snap, is he's he's this is the what I talk about playing the middle game. So you see sort of a split safety look, and then right before the snap, the other drops down to oh, I know I got blitz. I know they're rotating to a single high look. So where's where's the sort of creases and gaps there? Where that safety would have been. Right. right Pre-snap is not there. Post-snap, he sees that. And we talked about how teams consistently try to change change that look pre to post. He's seeing it now week in and week out. Next up, I thought this was a very clutch play. And, you know, he, he got criticized early on for checking down. The perfect call here. Third down. Just take it. Never go broke. Taking a profit. You've Any quarterback coach probably is – or some coach at some point has said that. I think Jake offensive coach tattooed on his tongue. He said it so much. Yes, and, and because it's true in certain instances, you know, and you know, you just that's where you know. And by the way, with the look and with the the covers that's being played here, two sh two eye shell spread, you know, everything's sort of widening out, going vertical. Take it all day, every day. First down. Good job, Dejan Edwards. And, we, we, and good job with Dejan. It's getting straight forward, by the way. Catch it and just go because he knows it's third down. Well, in preseason, we were saying, you know, George doesn't have a receiving running back like Kenny McIntosh, which is so true. I don't think that they do. But Edwards is probably making himself a little NFL money with tape like this. I, I think yeah. he's – the 40 time, will I think, will determine a lot of that. But he's at least, you know, draftable. I, I think very much dra late-round draft pick guy. Let's get into the love for Dylan Bell here. There's plenty of it for this game. And I'll go ahead and tell everyone, yes, this touchdown pass is going to be broken down, but it's our play of the game. It's in another video. Yes, and uh, that video that uh, Maria Martin from 11 Alive put today were right before the game with Kirby, kind of, and he was the first guy to tunnel, and Kirby's kind of giving him a little, little dap on the head right before the game. It's like, I knew this kid was going to ball out today, <laughs> and he did. But a couple different things. One, this is – just phenomenal quarterbacking because he's patient enough. And it's like, Oh, I'm going to go take, cause this is second down. He's, Oh, I'm going to go take the run. And then he stops. But by the way, he, as he goes to take the run, his eyes are still up. Like he's, I think he's going to run there. Boom. Steps up. Nope. My eyes are still up and then drops it off right there. And the other part, that's goes is an instinctual thing that quarterbacks, you know, over time develop. Some do, some don't. Watch his hand, his throwing hand, how it stops. Like otherwise, he's drilling that guy's helmet. Yep. Like that's just when you talk about just sort of incomplete control of the game and, and aware of everything that's going on around him. That's there. The other part, this is mesh rail. It's two touchdowns in this game. The rail route from Cash Jones at the bottom, clearing space. The two crossing routes, and then the ball route from Rosemary Jack Saint right over top the ball. Like this is their go-to goal line 
third and you know third and five type play. This is what they're going to do because it works against zone. It works against man, and he's now done it and seen it enough to just have success with it no matter what they do. For the most part, if it's competitive in the game, if Cash is on the field, it's a passing play. But he's been a solid enough receiver that I think defenses have to respect that because this wheel over here could be open for yes. a touchdown. Yeah, if they don't cover it. So sometimes, you know, depending upon how you catch them, you might get a backer. If they're in a man scenario, a backer that's late and you throw it over the top like you saw uh, earlier in the season for his touch, the touchdown reception. But, he had. but think where this, this ball is caught by Dylan Bell. It's right here. How do you get this guy away from here? Boom. Yep. Have him follow cash. Yep. Like everything's interconnected. And this, and the beautiful part about the concept is, is it's good against zone or man. Because if that zone, you stretch those guys out, and then that over the ball route to Rosemary Jackson is right down the, you know, right down the middle, open for touchdown as well. And because I always need to find reasons to praise Cash Jones, good on him for blocking and initiating down here, <laughs> just to make sure this is going to be a touchdown. I think it was going to be anyway because he was so close and it's Dylan Bell. But I just like to praise Cash Jones, as we'll see later in a different. And, and that line. dude slid off a bell like he had Crisco all over him. Uh, next play here, man. This I, throw, I, I thought I, Gary I, Danielson was gonna like just combust. <laughs> it was this, and then because the the road Rosemary Jackson is not too far after this. After these back to back throws, he was Gary Danielson was just he's, he was heart palpitating, <laughs> calling the game. But like I, I was expecting to get some text from you of like, oh my god, like that one. That's the NFL throw right there. Oh, 100 percent. Because and this angle shows it, like. As, if we look at this angle, right when the ball, when right as he's releasing the ball, and you look at the throw, like so, he's, so he sees the middle of the safety. He can't so seeing the safety there in the middle of the field, he knows the safety's going to go and track and see his movements, but he holds him enough, right? So as he goes to throw the ball, well, Bell beats the guy, and we'll and we saw that in I think the other piece of the clip. So you can't you can't obviously lead him, right? So he looks him off, holding holds enough, but you can't lead him too far down the field because you might run him into a, a big hit. you got to make an absolute perfect throw, timing, all that sort of stuff. And then you can't throw true back shoulder here because Bell's it got a step and a half a little bit, at least a step. You're going to run, you're basically going to throw it right into the defender. It's not like they're even and they can, he can just turn and throw back shoulder. This is legit the only spot for the ball. And just, Unbelievably great catch, great all like Dylan Bell had the game of his life, but the throw is unreal and great offense and a great throw and catch beats any sort of coverage all day, every day. I mean, Dylan Bell, yeah, Carson Beck made NFL money in this game. Dylan Bell did too, because I think NFL OCs are going to be looking at this like, how much can this guy do? Yep, Debo, Cordell, Patterson, but yeah, by the other way, look at Kendall Milton. Like this is a blitz. They play man. They play cover one man. Speaking of NFL money, and just this straight guy's up last month, and Stones, the backer, mm. and right on the Tennessee sideline too. Like they had to see that up close <laughs> and personal. And this is and at this point, you're like, oh, they're going to complete that. <laughs> like we get everything we want, and they're going to complete that. So you get that dime, and then you come back with this one. And, you know, so they have a sort of a two a cover two look, Tampa two type look to the to the wide side of the field or to the le his left. And then to the bottom of the field, they're playing man with a bracket and Bowers because you see two guys going to Bowers. Like so he's leaving, the, in essence, that sort of middle open. And this is where Rosemary Jackson just had a great game. And this is a 30 yard laser that I think was still rising as he catches it. It was still rising. It was in like he didn't slow down for this. He just went up for it and still stayed in stride. Man, like we've seen Beck struggle a little bit throwing down the field some and throwing the behind receivers more on the deep ball when there's more air on it. Yep. This is perfect. And that's, I think, when you look at his arm strength, and we saw the arm strength in the game, like some of the, like the one, the Bowers, it, it literally gets stuck in his face mask if he doesn't catch it. Uh, and then the other one that Bowers dropped because that thing had, way too much hot sauce on it. The within that like the arm strength is unbelievably real. Obviously the inaccuracies down the field, yes, we've you've seen those throughout the year. But when you think about if you can do this and you're hitting teams in this range, it's borderline unstoppable. Yeah. If your receivers are consistently winning. And I think think that's what like you look at 
technically your starting receivers didn't even play in this game. If you count Rara as a starter, which I think he was technically in the game and lad. I want to mention the growth here of Beck again, and I, this sounds like I'm on repeat sometimes, but when we saw this in the first month of the season, we're like, hey, you're about to get touched here. You would saw him get spooked some, all right? And, and he's gotten so much more composed. He has so much more faith in his offensive line. Yeah, from this angle, you can see what he sees here just because look at all this space that Rosemary is running into. Like It's wide open. But I think early in the season, this may be to Edwards over here, who still would have had a big game. Don't get me wrong. He's also wide open as he goes here, but not like that. No. And that's, I think it was, I was asking the event today just about looking at the offense pre Bowers injury and then post Bowers injury. The, the offense doesn't really look different outside of like we highlighted early on in the season. Uh, how much of the quick stuff to Bowers that we were seeing, like get him the ball quick, get the quarterback in rhythm type of things. You don't see that as much anymore. Obviously the injury impacts that, but you just didn't see it. You weren't seeing it anyway, because now the, what does Georgia's offense look with a first round quarterback talent? What does it look like? We're watching it. Like this is, this is 100. And by the way, this throw, so tough, such a tough throw. I don't know why Delp didn't touch at least touch that guy there uh, a little bit. He does a great job of staying on the line of scrimmage because he's covered up. He can't go down field. He's definitively a blocker. But this throw is – they always do it running to the quarterbacks, right? And I, I think like, me personally working with and, and doing it myself and then also working with QBs, I, oftentimes they, miss, they mess, mess it up going right more so than they do going left. And just how the precise nature that this throw has to be, because if you put it anywhere behind him, it's hundo the other way. Yeah. If you miss that way. And because of the short distance, you can't, it's not like you can lob it. Now he could have sort of lobbed this one, maybe to the, to the pile on a little bit, but no, for the most part, you're throwing this on a line. Like it's a great catch from Bowers, but that's just a sick throw. It's, well, it's look, look, this is got very pressure tipped or put in the air. Like, just the, the velocity on the throw, and then they'd be able to catch it. There's a lot of tight ends can't catch that in short space because that's a laser. Right. It, it's but, it's working. It's working to the nth degree. It's it's Mr. Howard on Facebook there says this is the best Georgia offense ever. I mean, statistically not necessarily there yet, I think, at least in terms of points a game, points per game. But just watching it how it functions and the plethora of weapons that are being worked that are on the field when help when completely healthy. I think you might have that argument. It's pretty sewn up, actually. More love for Dylan Bell. And more handle if if you can just win a line of scrimmage and do this against the blitz, like good luck defense. And look where that ball is. Perfect. Like literally in his face mask. In stride. I mean, we saw this in the national championship game. I think he hit Bell on a slant uh, in the, in mop-up duty against TCU. So, uh, but I, can I point ahead. out? I'm interrupting here because we're at no. the, the moment in the video here. I realize that this is uh, assignment here from from Tennessee's edge. Like, let me follow running back. But visually, it looks like he's like, "Oh, Mims? No, nah, I'm good." <laughs> I know he's yeah. doing his job, but yes. it almost looks cartoonish just the yes. way he backpedals. Like, oh, I don't want to. Nope. I don't want to mess with seventy-seven. Not that guy. <laughs> so we track. So with PFF, they track and we track ball placement data. So like, hey, is it accurate in terms of you know, if you put the bullseye around the receiver, is it within that window versus is it catchable, but you know, it's not necessarily accurate, or is it completely uncatchable? All that. Guess who's number one in the FBS in ball placement accuracy this season? You're going to tell me it's Carson Beck. It is Carson Beck. 73% accurate in terms of ball placement. That's, I don't think anybody was above 70%. Now, a lot of that was, you think about the screen game, and you're, you're adding that to that because that counts. Because number two in that metric is Bo Nix, and they are heavy screen game users. But... I don't think anybody last year and even maybe the last two years was above 70%. And he's at 73. One more just impressive. His pocket management has gotten so much better throughout this season. And this play is evidence of it as much as anything. 
when it's it's all the stuff that is taught that's what that's what's hard when i watch him is because it's not robotic i don't want to ever but it's all the things that get drilled to the nth degree from a quarterback training perspective of footwork and swiping the ball through uh you know step up in the pocket reset eyes all all those little details he is beyond excelling at this and feel like you said pocket presence trust it does a he extends his arm too much here and and gets again out on, on his front uh lean too much good quick set boom he's fine but then he he reached and gets off balance and then the speed gets him but again great job of him great job of Roseman Jack Saint pulling the ball in tucking the ball make sure it's not knocked out this was again the same exact touch like the concept if we go back and look at the concept back out of the backfield is the rail route two crossers love it and Rosemary Jack Saint and then Dylan Bell I think was maybe the, the over the ball route like the same thing that's their go-to and he's just nailing it I think it was Mike Leach that said if it's a well-timed uh, slant and, and you have just routes crossing over each other it's the hardest thing to defend well it's 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 the core it's the core route of the air raid yeah it, it's it's always been there and you know obviously the title of this video is question for Heisman question mark I think he's gonna be there I think he deserves to be in the room I don't know that like if you look at the statistics that Nick's and Jaden Daniels have put up like I think that's gonna sway some of them things that way uh but in terms of just playing the position he's playing it better than anybody in the country Regardless if he's there, regardless if he wins, the fact that he's in this conversation says so much about how he's grown this year, what Mike Bobo has done with him, how this offense has advanced. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I had people that see a ton of practices, people within the building, that they were saying that Georgia's quarterback situation was the worst that it was in 15 years heading into this season, even after a few games in this season. The confidence for not everyone, but like it was not super high with this guy like I, di I didn't make the stuff up that that i was predicting at the time and it's all been proven wrong mm -hmm. and like it looks so much different so much better talent was never questioned it was always like are confidence. you confident can you execute this and he's doing it and he's doing it at almost a level that we've barely ever seen at georgia at that position and it, it speaks to also how phenomenal of a job two people one head coach Knowing in advance that Munkin is likely going to go back to the NFL, you've you brought in all he brought in all the different people that he brought in to evolve this offense into the sort of perfect offense for Georgia, a true pro style offense that also mixes some of a lot of the college elements that when you just have better players you should use like the screen game and quick game things like that, but then bringing Bobo in and then that transition, perfect. It's been seamless and and Bobo's doing a phenomenal job of bringing him along and then now it's like you looked third and 12 you know we're only up 10 we're on our own territory like a lot of times that's a you know check down that's something quick no we're we're chucking it we're going we're putting the ball in this kid's hands because guess what he's the best player and, and we and the con they're confident in what he's going to do and how he's going to handle it and take care of the football i think Jaden daniels probably wins the heisman based on the stats we've seen especially the last two weeks i think Bo Nix will be there, especially with his story. Mm -hmm. And we'll see after that because there's a lot of ways that it can go. And I think Carson Beck's going to be in the mix there. 100%. He just, and deserve, deserves to be. He could be just on the cut line in terms of votes of getting there. It's kind of hard to change some voters' minds. Like Penix is probably going to be there, and Carson Beck deserves to be there more than Michael Penix. I agree. But that's I, that's probably going to be the way that goes because Penix has been talked about more and more all year long. So we'll see. Uh, Carson Beck can help himself with a monster game against Georgia Tech, but this past month, there's no reason to think otherwise. This is just what Georgia has been under Carson Beck, under Mike Bobo with this offense, and that's with interchangeable skill guys, and they're getting help there at some spots. But, like, this was without Ladd McConkey most of the game. Mm -hmm. And they did and Rara. Rara played just a little bit, had one catch, then was gone shortly thereafter. And it's – like, think about – like you, I, I hate to just – go there because I'm not really all about the narratives talk and the development piece or the QB stuff or the receiver stuff. Like, look at what is happening here with 
Stetson Bennett winning two national championships, being drafted when as a no star recruit, you know, and, and nothing. And then you look at what Beck's done when he wasn't and never transferred, stayed there, all that, like all those sort of narratives that get pushed out. And, you know, even I've seen some in the building, they're tweeting about those narratives, like in the receiver stuff, like, look at those guys step up. Look at, look how pro ready they are. Like Rosemary Jackson, we talked about it all year. He's going to get drafted in the fourth, fifth round. He's going to make a roster and he's going to be in the league for eight to 10 years because he's great on special teams. He's going to be great on third down and he blocks his tail off. Like he just is. And that's development. Development. And it's going to continue at Georgia because this is back to back years that we're saying Georgia has someone that's in the Heisman talk. And that's, that's more than we had for a long time at Georgia with quarterbacks. And yep. Mike Bobo is not slowing down. Kirby Smart is not slowing down. The talent's no. only going to get better at that position at Georgia and even have more assets there. So, uh, yeah, hell of a game for Carson Beck. That's yep. going to wrap it for us. We do need to thank Breda Pest Management for sponsoring this show, the official pest control of the Georgia Bulldogs. They protect Sanford Stadium. They can protect your home, too, if you go to BredaPest.com. Also, by ASW Distillery, a couple games in Atlanta happening here for Georgia, Georgia Tech, and the SEC Championship. No better time to go check, check out the tasting rooms around Atlanta. The one around the battery is a lot of fun, so maybe go check that out and see if you can figure out what the Braves are doing right now with that roster because uh, ASW, big supporters of UGA, five and six founders are Georgia grads. They are distilled by dogs. ASW Distillery, check them out on Instagram is where I like seeing all their new products. All right, we have more Film Don't Lie to do and another video starting now. We're going to have, uh, if you're watching live, that is, we're going to buy Georgia's defense against Tennessee. Thanks for watching Film Don't Lie.